The famous question posed by many people nowadays is that can science prove God? And what they really mean by that is can science discover God? For understanding this we need to distinguish the difference between proof and discovery. To prove means to establish a fact or a truth by evidence or argument. And discovering by definition is to see, to find out or to gain sight or knowledge of something which was previously unseen or unknown. In short, to discover means that something should be seen or witnessed by humans' naked eyes. Whereas to prove something means to provide evidences, reasoning or rational arguments in order to establish a fact, and it doesn't depend on our eyesight. However, science can always discover the signature of God in nature, which means science can always prove the existence of God through evidences. But through science, we can never discover God in this world. Now the question arises, why science can prove God but cannot discover Him? The answer for this is, Almighty Creator gives some sort of evidences or clues into His creation so that human being can accept his existence and to believe in him. However, no human being or science can ever discover God, because this life is a test for us, and Allah created us and gave us limited abilities to be tested with. To get what I mean, suppose that you are a professional modeler who uses a strong modeling software and creates a project in which there are people with consciousness. It means that the models that you have created are having the power of intellect, and you put a test for them to find you. Now if you think logically, they have only two options to find you or to prove your existence in order to accept you as their creator. The first option for them is to discover you or to see you. But of course you don't want that because it is a test and if you show yourself to them, then the test becomes meaningless. And logically they can discover you because you are out of this created project. So if they can't discover you, it doesn't mean that you don't exist. But the second option is that you send them signs and evidences and you also give them the power of intellect. They can find you through those evidences and their logic. It is like you have given them some tips for this test. And if they still don't accept your existence through those evidences, then it means that they are arrogant. Now think of yourself, you, your project, the world in which you live, and the entire universe are all created by a superior being. Don't you think that you are made in a mega computer? Actually, not a computer, but in a mega creation box? So when we are inside this creation box, we can just touch, taste, see, smell or hear anything which is physically inside this creation box. So these five senses help us to discover things which have connection with physics. But there are other things like love, like feelings, like intellect, meaning your mind. These things cannot be described physically. I mean, you cannot see, touch, smell or test your feelings. Or you cannot discover love or your mind through these senses. Does it mean that you don't have mind or there is no love because you cannot see, touch or smell them? Of course they exist, but you cannot discover them physically. You can prove their existence through signs and evidences, and using your logic. For instance, the sign for a sad feeling is crying, 
or when you analyze the outcome of something, it is an evidence for your mind or your intellect. So don't think that God is inside this creation box and you can discover him like any other thing. Because anything which is discoverable is not God at the first place. He's beyond this universe and even beyond your imagination. You cannot discover him by the laws of physics, because physics discovers anything which is bounded by the laws of physics. And Allah is not bounded by the laws of nature. So anything which is limited by these laws is not God. That's why you cannot discover him, but his existence is proven through evidences and logic. Everything that we must verify has to be touch and feel. Yeah. yeah. But let me tell you something. If God could be touched and felt and seen, would that be God? No, would, that, would that be it God? It wouldn't really be a test of belief, would it? Because you would know it's, for it's a fact. It's not even just a belief because God actually says there's good reasons to believe in Him. For example, look, do you believe you had a great, 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 great grandma? No. Do you believe? I mean, a... Yeah, but I mean, there's, there's obviously I know that because of I'm here now. Oh, exactly. Yeah, but... but that's exactly the point. Have you ever seen your great 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 grandma? You don't have access but to a DNA. I know scientifically, I, w I would have to have one to be here. How? Though. How? how, how well, I don't know. <laughs> See, that's the point. Using the terminology here, scientifically, you have no clue. You have no clue. Scientifically, you're damn. Science say we can only verify the physical world and things that we can touch and feel. Mm. This is a non-verifiable thing. Yeah. The only way you know you got a great 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 grandma is because you're here. You've made a logical, rational decision. Not based on the physical world, based on necessity. The complexity of this universe and the laws of nature are all evidences for existence of a wise creator who has designed them in such a precise manner. So if you don't see him, it doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. The universe actually may have a purpose, and some physicists are now suggesting it does have a purpose. And this has come out of some findings ab about the atomic, some of the fundamental numbers in atomic physics. These are numbers like the mass, the weight of an electron, the weight of a quark, the strength of gravity, the strength of the electromagnetic field. About 20 numbers that describe those and other parameters, features of our world, but nobody knows why it is that those numbers have the particular values that they do. Now, you could easily say, yeah, who really cares? You change the mass of the electron by a little bit more, a little bit less, does it really matter? And the answer is it does. See, it turns out that if you imagine that we had 20 dials right here, and we could fiddle with those 20 numbers at will, even a small change to the values of the known values of those numbers would cause the world as we know it to disappear. Uh, for example, if we go back to say one second after the Big Bang, uh, at that point the expansion rate and the mass density have to have been adjusted to each other just right uh, so that the universe is just at this critical point. Uh, if the universe at that point were expanding just one part in the 15th decimal place faster, the universe would have flown apart without galaxies ever having had a chance to form. On the other hand, if the expansion rate were just a little slower than what we think by one change, change of one in the 15th decimal place, uh, then the universe uh, would in fact have expanded to a maximum size and collapsed. We would never have even reached the time in the universe at which we're living. A natural question that many people ask when confronted with this is, who designed it so that they all fit together so perfectly to give rise to our world? Is it merely an accident? Is there some force of nature that's out there that requires the universe to be as it is? Or is there some conscious being behind it all that has dialed things in a manner to allow the world as we know it to come into being? What we can do is look for evidence that suggests that, that we're not here out of total random events. And to me, the arrangement, the special balancing of the fundamental constants, the fundamental forces of nature, tells me that, that there is a being there that has put this package together which has constructed this universe, someone outside the universe that was thinking about us and put it together for our benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great and majestic. He preserves himself in a majestic way that befits him. He doesn't want to reveal himself to the world except by his power and knowledge. And Allah created us in a way that we are not capable to see him in this world. 
but this will be the greatest reward of the people in Jannah to see their Creator. We must consider that we are being tested in this world by believing in God without seeing Him.